so none of the characters in it are your traditional action heroes, but it's very much, you know, has a lot of action elements to it. Why did you want to make something less conventional in that sense? Well, it's a character-driven thing. It's about characters mainly, and that other things are just are on the side, so to speak. It's not a gratuitous sex or violence or whatever. It's just a nice story with humanity and humor. I think. Yeah, it's characters. A, it's a fantastic script. Uh, great characters, uh, poly three-dimensional, and uh, and I think that uh, for an actor. Is, uh, is, a, is a blessing to, to have a script like this, a story like this. And, uh, and I think that also, uh, uh, I think that one of the important things in anything, I think, in, in art is the chemistry between between persons. And this movie has had a lot of chemistry between the And we did it in Texas, finally, instead of New Mexico, better rebates. Go around a corner and tell them to do a better job. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> It's, uh, you know, it's a Brownsville was great. I didn't, I'm, do, I'm reading a thing on the King Ranch. I didn't realize the genesis of the cattle industry, everything came, comes from Brownsville, way back in Brownsville, Texas. And uh, we were fortunate to, to film there, just as the right atmosphere in Texas, the Rio Grande Valley. And yeah, we had a layer to work. Yeah, absolutely. And we have to thank the people from Brownsville. Terrific. You were terrific. Terrific. It was like our. our well, on the note of the chemistry, I mean, with the three leads in it, you guys were all so great together on screen. Uh, did you have a lot of time to get to know each other beforehand? Uh, some on the run, on the run. He came to Virginia on the run. I, I had to feed him. I couldn't find a restaurant open to the family. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and uh, a lot of time. But that's okay. Sometimes, when, like Amelia said, you have good chemistry. That can happen right away. Like with Angie, I mean, she just was terrific, you know. Ed Johnson, the casting, helped find her, tracked her down from Madrid all the way over here. She lives in L.A. now, so she was so good for all the supporting cast. And when everyone, when someone, and when you love a thing, when you love something, everybody was rowing towards the same direction. And everybody uh, knew the, the story by heart. At least I did, and, uh, and you know, I think that everybody was in the same key. Yeah. We only had 23 days to shoot. Like 40 years to write it. <laughs> 23 years. I mean, he was writing on that 35 years ago. Yeah. Wait a minute, and he swiddled it down through the year, made it better and better and better. And now it was, it was now or never. Would have never gotten made. It was now or never. And Robbie there, Rob Carlin, helped hold it together. He's one of the producers. And uh, there was a lot of politics we won't go into, but you know, it worked out. Sometimes when things don't go totally smooth, it's okay. Sometimes when you have conflict, that makes it grow. Yeah, exactly. It makes it, it turns a negative into a positive kind of thing. And, you know, it, it was wonderful 23 days. Very intense. Uh, we almost, uh, we also had a hurricane towards us, and it <laughs> didn't come finally. It went to Honduras. Yeah. I, I smoked two packages of, of cigarettes. I quit smoking now. But, but it was, I would have. Would, would what made you stop? <laughs> what well, made you stop? I was in the editing room, and the day that at 2 p.m., I already had two packages of uh, cigarettes. I said, this, this is enough. But I would, I would do, I would live the, the whole experience again a thousand times. You know, and then everybody fun. around you stop smoking? Not my wife. Ah, <laughs> I know. How did you say it? <laughs> yeah. So, so what was it about your character that appealed to you? I've always you liked that character. Yeah. Since, since I read it years ago. Mm -hmm. like, to me it's like a descendant, kind of, of the guys in Lonesome Dove. And, and that, that Whitley wrote that script too for the book. But he wrote this, the initial one, before he even read the novel of Lonesome Dove. So, uh, I don't know, it's just, that kind of, it's just an interesting guy, Red Bowie, interesting character, the ranch. I just always liked the character, very, very special guy. I liked, always liked him. Yeah. Now, I, in the three main characters, going back to them, they're, they're very different characters, but they complement each other so well. So what do you think made them work so well together? You mean in the writing, or? Yeah, all around. Well, the writing and then in the casting. No, you have to find people. I call it from ink to behavior. 
in that journey, you know. It's in Britain, but then we got to find it, you know, the behavior. And in a certain way, the, the three of them, they are, the characters, they are three broken toys in a, in a way, in a certain way. Uh, three broken what? Toys. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they, you know, life brings them together and, uh, and uh, the kind of a serendipity. That's that's why they. I think that one of the things that why they work so well. Um, now another thing that really stood out to me watching it was the music in the film. I thought it was really good. Added a lot to it. Could you guys talk about that a bit? The music. Well, I uh, for me it was it was kind of a somersault because uh, uh, even though I am I I am half American by heart because I, I've lived here and I have a sister born here and I love this country. Uh, on the other hand, I, I live in Spain and, I, and I'm Spanish. So, for also as a musician, it was it was uh, also reto. How do you say reto in, in, in English? Uh, uh, something. How do you say reto in English? Gold. Uh, no, not gold. Well, anyway, um, it's something that difficult that you have to con uh, to complete, to follow, to achieve. Uh, and I recorded some of the music here in Austin uh, with uh, Texan musicians and also Mexican musicians that live here and also in, in Madrid and in Spain. And, uh, and I think that, that mixture, mixture works very well. And also we, we also had uh, uh, Julieta Venegas, the Mexican singer and, and composer, to sing the, uh, and compose also the song of the end, uh, of, the end of the movie. And uh, it has been a, a, an interesting experience for me, you know, recording in Austin and recording in Madrid and bringing all this together. Some of that music is called the Dos Juntos, the two sides, the American side and the Mexican side, they come in. Sure, I got sound. There's, there's an incredible, one of the slide guitars is from Barcelona and he's, I think that he's more Texan than, than Texan. Uh, uh, he's, you see this guy play with steel. Yeah, steel, yeah. And you, you, you hear him play steel and slide, both. He's amazing. And he's from Barcelona, Barcelona, yeah. Barcelona, but he's, he's really Texan in this. Now, Brett got to do, uh, there was a lot of dancing for your character too. Was that something that appealed to you about it? Yeah, just do it, you know. You go to any of these clubs in any any Texas town, they have a good barbecue and a good country band, you know, so uh, a lot of these cowboys they dance. Two step or waltz, right? Yeah. Sing a little bit, you know, it's like, you know, the old days they used to sing to the cattle. The cowboys. So when I say to my grandson, you don't sing, you don't dance, you know. He was like a pretty prosaic kid, you know. You know, yeah, they Guys like to dance. Yeah. Were there any challenges involved with having that many extras? Well, it, 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 uh, we were lucky because uh, the production team uh, uh, were able to, to bring. Well, the the word was spread, and uh, and it was easy to find extras in, in Brownsville, and uh, and people were. Oh, if you go to Facebook, if you go to the, to the internet, you can see. That a lot of people that worked as extras in the movie are are happy to have been in this Robert Duvall movie, and uh, they haven't done it for a living like in Hollywood, so they did not a chance to get bored. You know, like a lot of the extras <laughs> in mean, Hollywood like that. And, and it, it is true because imagine this is a night in all Mexico. There, there was a lot of night shoots, and, and you would see people waiting, sitting and waiting, and uh, you know for this is a low budget movie, but everybody was involved, very involved. You've obviously played a ton of iconic characters and stuff. What what is it you look for in a character with a new role? I never know. I never know until I look at. Them. You know, I always look at the character and that interests me. Then the script and then the director and who's the other actor. But it's always initially the character response or something. Exactly. Maybe a little different than someone else. And this is different than writing. Very much. So. Something I wanted to do for a number of years, and finally, as we said, it was now or never. It almost was never. <laughs> we made it now. I mean, uh, 
Yeah, it was, it was very special.